Now we are getting more technical. Welcome Lars Fischer, who is a product and application specialist for digitalization. Lars will show you how to set up an IO-Link device quick and easy live here. And he's happy to answer your questions afterwards. Welcome Lars. Thank you, Stefan. Hello everybody. My name is Lars Fischer. I'm the responsible technical guy for the southern region of Germany. I'm working with Balov roundabout for eight years now. And today we want to speak in my session a little bit about IO Link. IO Link, uh, maybe you have heard already the well established slogan easy installation with connecting instead of wiring. This is something uh, which fits perfectly to the cabling guys or the installation guys of the machines because they have the possibility to plug in the cable on the IO-Link master and at the IO-Link device. We have also the possibility to use the advantage of special intelligent IO-Link sensors. Because the IO-Link sensors has the possibility that you can set up, for example, an IO module as an input and output, or maybe both. It depends on your application and your setup how you want to use this IO-Link sensors. Nowadays, everybody talking about IIoT and Internet of Things and this stuff, the IO-Link sensors fits perfectly in this environmental because we can use really easy the service data out of this IO-Link sensors. The IO-Link sensors have, for example, the possibility to give you uh, information about the lifetime of the temperature and so on. And this makes it really easy to build up your own dashboards and take the benefit out of the IO-Link sensor for your own applications. We have also in common a flexible system solution with IO-Link if you use IO-Link for your machine environment. You have the possibility to set up your application right you need it. And why we think now it's the time to establish a new way because you already know maybe we have different possibilities to set up IO-Link devices. We have, for example, software, different softwares. We have the pop, uh, possibility to use function blocks. We can also use web UIs to set up IO-Link sensor on different ways. So why we need a new way to do this. We have also the possibility to set up standard sensor by hand. You have to go to the locating spot where the sensor is mounted. Then you take out your screwdriver or your fingers and set up the IO link, or the, the switching point, the distance, and so on by hand. With IO link, this is a little bit different because you do all the settings with a remote setup from your machine interface, from the HMI, for example. And therefore, it's not necessary to jump into the machine or climb to the mounting spot of the sensor. And so we can use the advantage of setting IO link sensors via remote. Now you're asking for sure, is this effort necessary to use a new software, use different function blocks and so on? We say there is something easier that you can use for setting up the IO link sensors in a quite comfortable way. We call it startup setup from the PLC. That means every PLC startup, if you power on your machine, you have the possibility to teach the sensors with a ground setup, and then you can start with your machine working. Because a lot of IO link sensors are set up only once, that means a quite huge number is only parameterized one time, and then you don't change the cabling, for example. That means it's really easy, possible, to set it one time and don't during the working process of your machine. We want to be open for all kinds of IO-Link devices, not only special for IO-Link devices from the Balluf company. We want to get an open solution that you can also parameterize devices from other manufacturers in your machine. And what's the big part in this game, we want to use the PLC engineering software the customer already uses during lifetime. 
We have prepared a sample, a demonstration with the TR portal. And in this TR portal, we have um, integrated already our BNI block. And with this BNI block, we have already assigned um, the smart light at the port 7. And with this setup, I want to explain you now the settings, what we can do here. We find on the left side in the device module catalog different already existing modules like RFID, safety modules, in and output modules, and mixed modules for sure, and also the intelligent signal light called smart light. If you dig a little bit deeper inside, you will find here at the module properties of the device, you will find here one really important topic. It's called the validation. The validation is responsible that you get the right parameter set up to your device. Otherwise, you get the parameter set of a signal light, for example, to a pressure sensor, and this is not the the goal of this game. So here with the validation, you can ensure that only this device, the signal light, the smart light, is accept accepted at this port. Also really important is the parameter server in that case. If you use the parameter server, then it's not possible to use the starter parametration. Otherwise, you will get a ping pong game. And this ping pong game, um, leads to the fact that the device is not possible to go into the run mode. Because the parameter server settings want to change the parameter of the device and the startup parameterization wants this too, and then you get a ping pong game and the system will not go into the run light or in the run state of the module. So this is not possible to use the parameter server together with this startup parametration. Then you have the possibility to change all the necessary parameter of this smart light to your needs. For example, you can select the operating mode to segment and also the amount of segments to five segments. The level indicator switch to top down and all the other settings are available directly here without any kind of manual or IODD. And how to set up the device? You have only to save the project, download it to the PLC, and then you have finished your action. So that's all that's quite easy to set up an IOLink device directly with the IOLink device module. And you don't have to take care about an IOLink manual or the IODD from the internet or any kind of software. The data storage is also done directly in the project file, so it's not necessary to use a different kind of software or anything like this. But I told you if you find not the right module in this device module catalog, you have also the possibility to use the basic modules on the right side. Because there we implemented a generic way to set up IOLink devices, also devices from Balov, also from other manufacturers. So it's quite easy to use the same steps as you saw before. We use here an IOLink output module with four bytes process data. We can rename it to signal light type A, for example, and adjust the Q address of that device. In the module parameters, you will also find the same settings for the validation, but there is nothing filled in already. You have to check the manual and take out the right vendor. The vendor is the manufacturer of the device and the correct device ID of the device you want to connect at the port zero in that case. You will find all this information in the manual of this device. Here, the Baluf manufacturer vendor ID is in hex calculated and the device ID also. You have to recalculate it in decimal, type it in, and now you have ensured that the device is connected here correctly. 
Now you have also the possibility to use the parameter server like you know before from other devices and older techniques. So it's also possible to use the parameter server for sure. But you have to ensure that you don't use the startup parameterization in that case. So you have to choose parameter server or startup parameterization. Here is an information about that. Also possible with that technology, we have the possibility to use block parameterization. That means you have the possibility to download all the parameters in one block. Therefore, you have to ensure that at both checkbox, the equal uh, ch is checked. And then you download all the parameter in one block. Otherwise, it will be downloaded parameter after each other. And now we're working with index, sub-index, length, and data, not with an IODD or anything like this. We work with the raw data. So here with the 64 index, with the val value 0, 01, we change the working mode of the smart light into the level mode. With the index 65, we change the amount of segments, in that case, to 3. And now we are already done. We change two parameters of the smart light, and every time you re connect the smart light, you will always change these two parameters to these values. So quite easy at all. But what happens if someone already played with a smart light and changed some parameters and you have not the factory defaults? So you have also the possibility to use this checkbox here, reset to factory defaults at all, because with this you set up the device back to factory defaults. So you have the same basement for all kind of devices and so it's possible to work always with the same basement and only the parameters you want to change, you have to, ch uh, to change. So this is not necessary to check all the, the parameter at all. Also a nice feature, if you set up all the parameter of this device, you have the possibility to copy the device to different ports so you can save working time and so it's really easy possible to set up your environmental of your machine. So that's all from this demonstration. Now we jump back to the presentation to make a short summary to get all the points together. We have SON, we have the IOLINK devices directly at a well-known PLC engineering software configured. So it's not necessary to care about new softwares, new function blocks, you can save the time. So it's really easy to use this new way. It's not an exclusive way because you have also the possibility to use functions blocks at all or software. You can use it as an add-on and make your own combination that fits for your needs. You saw we have this universal solution for all kind of IOLINK devices. So we are open for all manufacturers. And so it's quite easy to connect every kind of IO-Link sensor to our Balluf masters. Already the high level of data storage was shown in this sample because you don't have to care about a backup with a different PLC software or software or web UI or what else. Because you have all the parameters you have done already, you have stored it directly in your PLC project file. So this is also a big benefit for you as machine builder or end customer because you have only one data backup and you have all files together in one place. The device copy also a quite nice feature because you have the possibility to set up, for example, one, um, one pressure sensor and copy it to different ports and you are finished with your work. In the end, I want to say the programming guys will be happy again because the big workload will be done now from the programming guys. And with this new way, we can ensure that it's possible that the programming guys will also accept IOLINK a little bit more than before because they don't have to care about IOLINK, function blocks, and so on. So thank you for watching this session. If you have further more questions, please come to our local guys and we have the possibility to support you in different ways, directly and personal. Thank you. Thank you, Lars, for the demonstration of the, how to set up the IO-Link devices. So let's see if there are some questions 
in the chat. And there is already one. Is the Rockwell PLC software like Studio 5000 supported as well? Uh, till now we have only the possibility to use it together with Profinet devices in different PLC environments, like the Siemens for example. We try to find a way to support also the Ethernet IP for example for the Rockwell world or Ethercat devices for the Backhoff world. But till now we are only available with this, with this way directly uh, together with Profinet devices, with our Profinet IOLink device family. Okay, thank you. Can I change the, the startup parameters of the IOLink devices on the fly? It works a little bit like the parameter server, but the big difference between the parameter server and the startup configuration is that if you do a change in the hardware configuration and you download it to the PLC, you have to do the PLC into the stop mode. That means the machine has to stop working, then take the new data set and then continue with working. With the parameter server, it's possible to do it on the fly, but with the startup parametration, it's not possible to change the parameter on the fly. Okay, thank you. And um, how can I make sure to connect the right device um, and to make sure that it receives the right data? This is the, uh, the validation, because the validation ensures that only at the port you set up the validation for the device, accept exactly this device from the manufacturer Balov, for example, the smart light. If you connect a pressure sensor, then you will get an error message that tells you you have connected the wrong device. And so you can ensure that you get first the right parameter to the device if the device is already matching. The parameter server makes it by itself, but the startup parametration not, so you have to ensure it with the validation. So thank you, Lars, for your demonstration, and thanks a lot for answering the questions. Lars will be available in the public chat. If you have more questions, feel free to ask them there. Lars will be happy to answer them. For all the others, thank you for watching. We will have a short break and be right back. Thank you.